What happens when you combine the number one brand in the convenient nutrition category, a sales channel revenue diversification opportunity with 150,000 US locations, and a beverage portfolio that has recently shown an affinity for strategic partnerships? If you are an avid follower of my quarterly content that analyzes the performance of the functional CPG brand portfolio, Bellring Brands, that introductory word problem might sound vaguely familiar. And that's because at the very end of last month's video, I stated, why isn't Premier Protein sold in convenience stores to the same level as Fairlife slash Core Power or Muscle Milk? These brands are owned by the Coca-Cola Company and PepsiCo, which are the absolute masters at the required channel route to market called DSD distribution. This is not a core competency of Bellring brands currently and would require substantial strategic shifts. That being said, they could speed up this endeavor by creating a strategic partnership with the likes of Keurig Dr. Pepper. But maybe that thought needs explored more in future content. Well, after getting positive feedback from you guys on that wild idea, here's that future content exploring why I think KDP needs to consider entering into a strategic sales and distribution partnership with Bellring Brands. But maybe before we get into the reasons why each party should be interested in that deal, it would be beneficial if I start us off by running through some current categorical market insights. While carbs and fats seem to go through like intermittent bouts of villainization by the American public, protein is the macronutrient that few consumers question its contribution to health. In fact, a recent Brand Watch report showed that online search interest for the term high protein reached a five-year high in 2013. Additionally, a shift towards a fast-paced wellness-seeking lifestyle is pushing consumers to switch to quick and healthy meals or snacking options. So while the great lockdown might have slowed broad categorical momentum briefly, consumer interest in convenient high protein products has continued to soar. Moreover, the expansion of formats alongside taste and functionality has led to a greatly developed category where consumers are flush with high protein options. And that optionality can span far outside the typical sports nutrition space as high protein callouts can be spotted on product packaging within just about every food and beverage CPG subcategory. So though traditional convenient nutrition formats like bars, shakes, and powders have increased household penetration and seen sales performance above historical categorical growth rates recently, they must also compete for share of stomach against those non-traditional high protein food and beverage CPG SKUs. The good news is that the rising interest in better for you products has also expanded the number of occasions where consumers are seeking out protein solutions in their diets. Whether it's Euromonitor revealing that improving fitness and getting healthier are the top drivers of high protein diets or Nutrition Business Journal stating losing weight and supporting everyday activities are the primary reasons for buying protein products, the data from those surveys collectively support that the rapidly growing and on-trend convenient nutrition category has diverse need states driving purchase decisions. And it's those varying need states, most commonly labeled as everyday nutrition, adult nutrition, sports nutrition, and weight management, plus the fact that even within the beverage format, a great deal of categorical commercial activity happens in untracked retail channels. It makes proclaiming an exact market size difficult, but let's just say I estimate that number to be somewhere just north of $6 billion in the US market. Outside of private label penetration, the top five largest protein beverage brands in the US market would be Premier Protein, the Coca-Cola owned tag team of Core Power and Fairlife, Ensure, which is owned by Abbott Labs, Boost, which is owned by Nestle, and then Muscle Milk, which is owned by PepsiCo. If we were to include that half a billion dollars or so of private label retail sales activity to those five market leading brands, it would account for around 70% share of the overall category. But maybe this is a good time to transition into talking specifically about Premier Protein. One of the underlying reasons why I believe Premier Protein has become the protein beverage market leader is the brand's ability to appeal to a broad range of those convenient nutrition consumer need states. 
While it primarily competes in the everyday nutrition need state, Premier Protein also has developed brand equity and appealing product value propositions to sports nutrition, adult nutrition, and weight management consumers. But another Premier Protein growth driver could be what I deem as superior management. Whether it's regarding to what I just had mentioned with the successful cross-sectional brand positioning or navigating downside risk from skyrocketing input costs, supply side capacity constraints, or even a voluntary product recall, Premier Protein has continued to outperform even the above average RTD liquid subcategory of convenient nutrition growth rates from the last almost like four or so years. And just to kind of put some financial numbers around this for those that do not follow my Bellring brand's quarterly earnings breakdowns, in its fiscal 2023 year, Premier Protein had revenue of $1.39 billion, which was up almost 25% year over year. In terms of revenue by product format, while Premier Protein does sell powders and then other formats through licensing deals, it almost entirely comes from the protein RTD beverages. Now, if we consider where Premier Protein is strongest, in terms of sales channel activity, it's wholesale clubs, mass retailers, grocery stores, and e-commerce marketplaces. In fact, Premier Protein's three largest customers are Costco, Sam's Club slash Walmart, and Amazon, which collectively make up around 75% of the brand's total revenue in fiscal year 2023. So what could be causing this? It mostly comes down to the fact that Premier Protein as an organization has built around its strength of selling almost exclusively in multi-pack SKUs. If you look at the entire protein beverages market, multi-pack SKUs drive the bulk of the sales activity. But I'm not sure that's ideal long-term from a consumer or market outlook perspective. When you hear players like Premier Protein talk about how the liquid RTD subcategory of convenient nutrition has less than half the household penetration to its like protein bar counterparts, it's used to signal a huge long-term growth opportunity. While I agree with this, you also must realize a key driver of that is the consumer cost of entry. If consumers most commonly see multi-pack SKUs of protein beverages available in retailers, the cost of entry is maybe $10 for a four pack and $30 for a 12 pack. Alternatively, protein bars are most commonly available in singles at maybe $3. Then why doesn't Walmart or Kroger break down a multi-pack of protein RTDs and place them on the shelf? Well, convenient nutrition isn't living up to its billing if those protein beverages needed to also be refrigerated first before consuming for the best customer experience. And I'm sure some of you are thinking, well then, have those employees break the multi-packs down and merchandise those singles in the store's cold space. I'll just kind of laugh a bit and tell you that's way too logical for how much of the CPG product categories operate inside the sales and distribution models of large legacy retail channels. I'll share kind of a quick story from about six or seven years ago. And this was right around the time when the Amazon and Whole Foods market deal happened. Grocery e-commerce was red hot and I collected a few big wins in that space with legacy CPG brands. I honestly thought I could change the CPG world. And then I took on this large beverage client with a CEO that had been a leader in the space for several decades. He said, Josh, you can try and disrupt these beverage sales and distribution models all you want, but they were here before you were born and they will likely be here long after you're dead. Sometimes you can learn a thing or two from immovable objects. So in honor of that advice, how can brands like Premier Protein create a lower cost of entry for consumers to trial this format of convenient nutrition and the protein beverages market increase its household penetration? They need to embrace a DSD distribution strategy. With stating that, I'm also acknowledging that's easier said than done, and it's a two-way street that requires more of the DSD network to embrace the protein beverage category. I stated earlier that Coca-Cola owns the tag team of Core Power and Fairlife, and then PepsiCo owns Muscle Milk. Now, I'm not privy to any exclusivity clauses in those contracts that were created with those mergers and acquisitions moves of the past, but it's still unlikely, at this point at least, that the two biggest national DSD networks would add another protein beverage competitor that it didn't wholly own to its roster. So that leaves almost any protein beverage brand 
to build a mostly piecemealed independent DSD network, which is tough. Then you must consider that some of these independent DSD players don't have much interest in protein beverages because they typically take historical views on categories instead of playing the possible chess moves out into the future. And historically speaking, they've seen the convenience stores coolers dominated by two players in most markets and the merchandising availability not extend much past maybe a shelf or two. But as I stated earlier, we are at one of those chicken or the egg moments where the market might be interested in more brand availability of protein beverages in single unit SKUs, specifically across cold placements in convenience and kind of grocery and mass retailers. Yet, even if these DSD distributors don't listen to my forward leaning insights about the functional CPG space that I know so intimately, Premier Protein isn't like almost any other protein beverage brand, and it doesn't need to go through the complicated, piecemealed, independent DSD network building route. Premier Protein is a billion dollar brand that has the highest market share and household penetration in the category. So the convenient nutrition brand can make whatever strategic partnership happen if it makes sense to its stakeholders. That could be AB InBev or the more likely large beverage portfolio of Keurig Dr. Pepper, which I've been publicly predicting needs to get more protein beverage exposure since October of 2021. It's that 26 month old YouTube video that's a bit of a cult classic within the beverage CPG space because it correctly predicted the Nutribolt C4 Energy deal, the La Colombe deal, and the athletic brewing investment. But if you've watched that content and remember it, I talked about protein as one of the five beverage categories that KDP needed to invest in over the next three years, but I didn't predict Premier Protein as the conviction mergers and acquisitions target. In fact, it was the only beverage category I didn't give a prediction because I thought protein input type created too much strategic optionality. Looking back now, a lot of those longer term ideas around owning the whey protein precision fermentation commodity technology were based on my belief that the CEO, Bob Gambert, would be around a decade plus to see that speculative investment create future competitive advantages. With a new KDP CEO taking over in the second quarter of 2024, he will be focused on the immediate impact of deals, which brings us back to Premier Protein. KDP typically seeks out sizable deals that are more complex, resulting in portfolio expansion and distribution scale. As an example, when KDP did deals for C4, La Colombe, and most recently Electrolyte to fill category white spaces, those new brands create more scale and the KDP portfolio expands, which makes its capabilities become stronger. So its drop sizes get bigger, merchandising gets more impactful, KDP can service each store more frequently, and its commercial relationships tighten. This enables further investment and growth that feeds this flywheel. One of the biggest areas of impact from those recent deals has been in the convenience channel. KDP's total volume in chain convenience stores has increased by approximately 50% after incorporating those brands, providing scale and efficiency benefits across the entirety of its portfolio. Sounds like just the kind of thing that Premier Protein can benefit from. And they're also the type of brand that can help feed the KDP flywheel, right? But I just wanna end with some quick final thoughts. In the last KDP earnings call, the company CEO stated something super small that I think was overlooked, but relevant to this content. He stated the strategic interest to further build out the portfolio through high value mergers and acquisitions and partnerships with counterparts who increasingly seek us out. So I guess this idea really hinges on the Bellring brand C-suite team seeking out KDP for its move into single item cold placement across large retail channels like convenience. Well, I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting the like button to support me. Also help me get to my new short-term goal of 4,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that all, a little over 90% of you, I think, um, that are watching this YouTube video are not subscribed to my channel, and that makes me extremely sad. But I do want to thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.